emotionally. It's just the case. Within feminism and the, the feministic ruled world, now you have a lot of men who are made weak, right? That's true. But the group of people who are the most unhappy is women. It is, it's like that. And there are studies about this. I would say, Abdul Malik, it's safe to say that the preservation of the unbroken chain of narrations to the Prophet ﷺ, alongside with the Islamic perspective on perceiving gender differences and the values of a, of, of a woman versus the values of, a, of, of the man, and uh, the relationship between them, those are the things that started to attract you into Islam. Well, um, I can uh, give more examples on, on how ahadith were the key point that brought me to, to Islam. SubhanAllah, after I became Muslim, it was like half a year after I have already been Muslim that I first touched the Quran and read it. Like, except for what I needed for prayer, obviously, but and really going into Quran took me a while. I was so stuck into I and mean, it's not, not bad to be stuck there, but you know, I was so focused on ahadith, subhanAllah. Uh, some things on the way to becoming Muslim, where yeah, the, the, the entry point was definitely this whole construction about society. And there was more than just the point of how family works and the, the role of the wife, the role of the husband. There was more. Also how, how uh, kids are viewed. Uh, it's not a very child-friendly environment in, in the West. The next step was I was uh, there is some hadith that led me back to psychology. There is some equivalence that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned between the modern way of describing the, the internal workings of our mind, of our personality, from the perspective of Sigmund Freud, the father of modern psychology. In Islam, there is the aql, the nafs, the qalb, and the ruh. You have these different instances. And in modern psychology, from Sigmund Freud's perspective, you have different internal instances as well. The it, the over I, the I, and you can relate them to what the Rasulullah said, pretty much one to one, okay? You have the nafs, it's the instance that just provides motivational energy to pursue the core urges, right? So the, the unfiltered core urges before anything is filtered out. Then you have the next instance, for example, the Qalb, who is like the moral instance, which in uh, psychological term from Sigmund Freud is the over eye, which is constructed, interestingly, from your social surroundings, according to, to Sigmund Freud, which is exactly the same as in Islam, because the Qalb is, yani, we don't say it's constructed, but its moral views can be changed like the over eye that Sigmund Freud describes. And it's the moral instance. The urge from the it, from the nafs comes and is then monitored by the moral instance saying, oh, that is not a good urge. You should not do that, right? Something feels right or wrong based on the status of your kalb, of your heart, or the over eye in Sigmund Freud's terms. It's, it's the same system and I can go into more details, but I will cut it short here. The thing that at that point Yani caught my attention is that Sigmund Freud was a scholar who dedicated his entire life on this subject. He did not have 10,000, he had maybe 20,000, 30,000 patients in his lifetime that he studied on. And he dedicated his whole time on that. And he wrote books and he made mistakes. And he revised his views and wrote stuff again. And he discussed with other scholars of that time you know, that was a high time of modern psychology. I mentioned Alfred Adler that my parents follow. He was in the same time. And his views, Sigmund Freud's views, were corrected from his daughter. She followed up after him. And later on, her views were corrected. And like the modern psychology is still based on his views, but it went through corrections. SubhanAllah, and things changed and, you know. But the core thing is they made mistakes, they corrected, and they were dedicated on no other topic than this. And they came up with this description of our inner workings. That, fit, that fits 100% with the hadith. Well, a good part of it. There are differences when you go into the details, but the broader picture is correct. And Rasulullah did not study psychology. He did not have patience. He did not dedicate his whole time. 
right? And he didn't correct. He said it one time and it was right. So that was one of the strong strikes against my overinflated ego. So, well, like, okay, one moment, one moment. You think you're so intelligent, but if you're wrong with that point on God, then you will be the most stupidest person on your Mokim. So that like started the thought on, you better check that point again. Wow. Well, after that stage where I started thinking again about God and like questioning my atheism, I went back to the start, to Christianity. I was still living with my parents. I started discussing with them about religion. And in these discussions, I took the point of view as a Muslim. And that is how they became aware that I'm thinking about that direction. And I directly got some feedback, especially from my mom. I love my mom. She's a little bit energetic. And her direct feedback was, if you become Muslim, you're not my son. You will go out. <laughs> but I know my mom and uh, it did not move me much. And I, I know that this is just words. Uh, I have great, great relationship until now, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. But I, I discussed a lot with my father. He, he quoted something from the Bible and the meaning of the one who knocks the door, the door will be opened for him. If you really, really come to God asking for him, he will reveal himself. He, he will show you the way. And um, I thought, okay, I will make a test. I will pray one time to Jesus and ask him for guidance. And then I will one time ask for, you know, ask my creator for, for guidance and I'll see what happens. And I was about to do that. And then I stopped. And the realization came, if there is God, and I don't know the exact way, then the only thing I can do is only ask God. Because any step further would be maybe the fatal mistake of worshiping again someone else. But if I only ask God, only God will answer. And this is the, the core thing between Islam and Christianity. And one of the core um, discussion points that I had with my parents, on the day of judgment, I, as a Muslim, will come forth in front of God and I have not worshiped anyone beside him. You are taking the gamble to worship something additional that with your words, you're forming, ah, it's still the same, etc. You are in the danger, not me. I'm safe. You think God will punish me for not worshiping anyone else than him? I will come clean from any worship aside, uh, besides him. I will have only worshiped him. You have the extra step that you will need to be sure if it's right or not. So I went into the bathroom, took my first wudu and I prayed to Raqqa. If there is a moment where I would say, yeah, that was when you had really converted to Islam, it would have been that that moment. So how did it feel when you did the Torah cap prayer? I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stubborn. It uh, still was not that I fully accepted everything. It felt right. Definitely felt right. And it was not the last Torah cap that day. But I still had trouble with some issues. For example, the status of my parents on the Day of Judgment because I feel them as very, very good people. They freely give from their money for the poor and they are not harmful to anyone. Etc. I, I could not understand how, how would their status be. That point taught me like the absolute core basis of Tawhid. Because they're not good with God. Subhanallah. Doesn't matter what you do. Subhanallah. If you want one-on-one -on -one connection, how you treat your creator is wrong. Doesn't matter what else you do. Subhanallah. And may Allah guide your, your parents um, and... A couple of days later, I was alone at, at home, the doorbell rang, and I opened and it was a missionary. He approached me, I would like to talk about Jesus with you. I'm not interested, I'm Muslim. But you're German, right? You're, you're German? Yeah, I'm German. I'm a new Muslim. Have a nice day, I closed the door. And then I stood there for a second and like, okay. Yeah, actually, I'm a Muslim. How did you take your Shahada? By myself, in my, in my room. 